Good evening. Welcome to the Easton School Planning Committee meeting of Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. In keeping with an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by committee members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards quorum. This meeting will be broadcast live and recorded on ECAT. So let's get started. The first item on the agenda are the minutes of August 17th, 2022. Um, I can't see everyone, so if anyone has a comment or question, please just shout it out. Okay, then I will take a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve, full genetic. Do I have a second? Second, Cedarbaum. Great. I'm going to go through roll call. Uh, Alicia? Yes. Uh, Ann? Yes. Billy? He's not here. Caroline? Yes. Dottie? Yes. Sam? Yes. Tim? Oh, yes. Great. Uh, and I don't know if Patrick is here yet. Patrick, are you here? Not yet. And Wiseman, yes. Great. Okay. Thank you. So next item, construction progress update. Walter? All right. Uh, I think everyone can see my screen. So we've had a lot of progress over the last month. Um, so what you're seeing on the uh, screen right now on the left is in the install of Cafeteria 2, uh, which is the large cafeteria, and specifically the terrazzo tile flooring that's going in in the calf uh, and going in in the main uh, corridors on both the east and the west side of the calf. Um, on the right side, you can see a little bit more of it. You can see guys laying the tile. And uh, we'll move right along up in the... Uh, Top right of the right picture, you can see the lookout from the media center uh, library uh, looking down into the cap. Uh, happy to show the pictures of the school sign and the uh, new parking lot at Easton Middle School, uh, which has since been final paved and striped. Uh, and the school sign is in place. And I think if everyone's seen it, it's a, it's a great piece that's, that's out there already. Uh, you see some pictures of the gymnasium wood flooring that's been installed. Uh, on the right, you can see a little bit uh, of the equipment that's been installed since then as well. So you have the gym divider curtain. You have the basketball hoops. You have the, uh, in the right-hand side of the right picture, you can also see the device dividing wall that's between the cafeteria and the gymnasium. Uh, so that work has been progressing. Uh, we, what you see uh, on the walls right there, the brick that has not been painted is where the gymnasium wall pads will be going up along with the traverse wall um, and some other features. And then you see the acoustic wall uh, panel system that's throughout the gymnasium to help with the echoing in the gymnasium. Just from an aesthetic, Walter, I would add that those pads that we chose are colorful. They represent the colors and the wings. So the, it looks very uh, light and bright and white, <laughs> but there will be uh, color in there as well. All those pads will be different colors. And of course the equipment that the kids use and the striping on the floors, there will be a lot of color, but we kept everything else really light so that it wasn't a really sensory overloading or too, too juvenile for uh, community purposes for community use. Yep. Um, uh, unfortunately, we didn't grab a picture from the other side of the gymnasium, but where the picture on the right is taken directly above the brand new scoreboard is installed, it's east and orange. Um, and then also the logo has been finalized and also, well, as Lisa mentioned, uh, there'll be a lot of color throughout the gymnasium, um, but the logo will be in color as well. Uh, so on the left-hand side, you can see one of the pre-K corridors uh, really getting finalized. So you can see the hooks, uh, uh, coat hooks or cubby ho uh, coat hooks or backpack hooks on the exterior, and then the porthole uh, mirrored windows for students to sit in, read, um, are getting installed. And then inside the classroom, you can see an installation of the Promethean boards along with the Epson uh, projectors. So again, every classroom, um, there's 84 of them throughout the 
school, uh, every classroom, and then a lot of almost every other um, small little workroom has has one of these as well. Uh, outside the school, a lot of work has been progressing. Uh, we have the one of the wood canopies getting uh, finalized here on the left-hand side of the building. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, you can see a little bit of the pre-K uh, walkway. Uh, so that walkway leads to the mudroom uh, vestibule for pre-K. Uh, you can see the fence on the right-hand side, which really helps to uh, corral the students, uh, eliminate the, uh, the runners. Um, and then kind of where that picture is being taken is the beginning of the resilient play surfacing um, and the play structures for pre-K, which again is all things. Uh, so some uh, time-lapse comparison photos. Uh, you can see that the wall panels have progressed, the insulation's up, a lot of the material has been moved off the roof, the equipment's been installed, the canopies are getting um, completed. That's cam uh, camera one. Uh, camera two. Uh, you can see that the loam is getting ready to get placed outside of that canopy. You can see that the roof on the canopy is getting finalized, moving right along. And then on camera three, um, even since this picture was taken, um, there's been a lot of work that's progressed. All of these uh, sidewalks have been poured um, throughout the front of the school. Um, so the work is really progressing on the outside of the building here. Uh, so, update on the heating oil spill, uh, happy to let you guys know that work is back progressing in that area. The, um, this was authorized by DEP and the LSP uh, for work to go back in. The area has been cleaned. Um, a couple things to note is that there will be uh, quarterly monitoring for, I believe, a, either a year or a year and a half. Uh, there'll be, there are test pits installed. You can um, see them a little bit in these pictures, these white poles that are sticking up uh, in the background um, in, in both pictures. Um, so there's a few, I think there's four outside that'll get monitored and then there's vapor emissions that'll get monitored. Um, there, we, we're not reading any at this point, um, but for safety, if there are any, there'll be mo two monitored through the slab inside the school. Um, but at this point we are, the work's progressing um, and, we're make, and we're following all the recommendations of the DEP and the licensed site professional. So I'm happy to re report that that is not holding up any uh, progression of work in the courtyard or at the canopy at this point in time. Uh, cash flow and schedule update. Uh, moving right along, uh, bill to date is 62.1 million MSBA reimbursement to the town of Easton. 25.48 million and there's 4.5 million pending MSBA audit. Uh, moving right along, chasing these bars as we progress. Um, really nothing else there. Uh, so construction look ahead, we're gonna be uh, looking to wrap up the terrazzo floor tile installation. Uh, gymnasium scoreboard went in. Uh, linear wood grill framing uh, at A building. Uh, toilet and sink installations continue throughout the building. Um, that also includes the uh, bottle fill stations and the bottle fillers in the classrooms. Uh, gymnasium wood floor, um, that's inclusive of sanding, striping, sealing. Um, so the floor is um, more or less complete, but there's some final touches that need to go on. Uh, the uh, bubblers are going in, that's the water bot uh, bottle fill stations. Resilient flooring is continuing throughout the first floor on AC and D buildings. Uh, it's really wrap, uh, wrapped up in the classrooms, so it's limited to the corridors, uh, and that crew, crew has been nearly double in size at this point in time, so they went from two, one, one or two guys installing to four, five, or six. Uh, they're moving right along. The window shades uh, are getting installed throughout all the classrooms and the group areas. Generator was delivered to the site. Final connections have been completed as of, I believe, yesterday. Uh, they did startup and testing yesterday, uh, today. Uh, classroom bench installs are continuing. Fieldstone seat walls throughout the school. If anyone's been to the site, those look great. Uh, they're progressing right around the site. There's quite a few of them. Fiber, fiber cement panel installations continuing. The glue lamp canopies, um, really just the last one to build is the one that was being held up by the oil spill, um, they're progressing that one at this point, um, and then getting the roofs on those, and then the roof edge of metals continuing at the exterior of the building. Uh, so a quick contingency update, uh, almost 72% of the time of the project has elapsed. Um, we have 
uh, change order nine that is going to the select board on Wednesday evening next week. Um, anticipation of that change order nine being executed would bring the total change orders to date to 1.28 million. Uh, available 1.9 million, so we're still in great shape there um, with the current exposure of 477,000. Um, and again, just to remind everyone, that is all the exposure that uh, the PMA and Perkins Eastman team are aware of, that we've been made aware of, that we're tracking. Doesn't mean we agree with it, doesn't mean that um, the values are accurate or fair at this point. Um, so we're still neg negotiating anything in that yellow column right there. Um, but in great shape with contingency um, and moving right along. FF and EIT budget update. Uh, we did have one adjustment. Um, the cable runs that were priced as part of the board installation, the Promethean board, uh, they were bid as a nine foot run. Unfortunately, they were closer, or they were bid as a 16 foot run and closer to a 32 foot run. So this is uh, $9,000 uh, that need to be spent for a basically twice the amount of cabling in each of the classrooms. Um, but we got that solved. Um, we did confirm with our um, procurement specialist that that is what was bid um, and that they, they were entitled to this value. So we were able to get that taken care of. Still keeps us in a great shape on the ff &E number. Um, that was approved of 3 million, we have 123,533 remaining. Um, for miscellaneous items, you know, that may come up um, throughout the install um, with those installs coming up beginning on October 14th to the 17th. Some of the technology has started already, um, but furniture on the 14th or something. Uh, quick update on wastewater treatment, uh, procurement construction update. Uh, if anyone's been over there, you've seen the fence in the parking lot still. Um, that fence should be minimized. They sh may still need the back corner, four, five, six spots in the back corner um, at the end of this week, but they are going to minimize it at the end of this week. Uh, at this point in time, the contractor has uh, been uh, pumping out the system. So the wastewater treatment plant is not up, up and running. So they've been pumping on a daily or every other day basis. Um, and filling the tanks uh, that way, um, which is what they're required to do. They were uh, not able to complete their work, um, but they've been able to work with the district, work with the town, work with the school to make sure that schools can, the schools and police and fire can continue. Uh, there's been no interruption to services. Um, so really the only work that's left in there contractually is uh, prep and painting of the interior tanks reassembling the tertiary tank, which was really what was holding them up. They were um, missing a lot of the material. It came in, although it was ordered on time, it did come in late. Um, so that's why they're taking care of pumping of the wastewater treatment plant tanks. Uh, there's a little bit of electrical work that needs to occur. And then um, on the October 14th, I think we're expecting the final, the new fans and blowers uh, to come in. Those will be swapped out after, after the fact. Um, the, the existing ones can be used uh, until that time that those new ones are available. So very limited work at the end of this week uh, really should be limited to what's within the buildings. Um, and we're moving right along, making sure. So the rogan has been really responsive to everything. Um, and again, no interruptions to anything at school. So happy to report that. Uh, I am going to turn over to uh, Jackie for an update on some samples of the dedication plaque and Jackie just tell me when you want me to flip through and I'll start. Okay, thank you Walter. Yep. Um, I know last time we had kind of a lengthy discussion on what to do with the dedication plaque. So what I did was I went and I looked at the plaques at Parkview, RO, the middle school and the high school just to see what they all had done. Um, and they all pretty much followed the same format. They had the committee members who oversaw the project, the superintendent and the principal. So um, we can discuss whether we want to have committee members on it or whether just a generalized statement. Um, and I know what was kind of holding up um, some of the discussion was that, you know, when you put the committee members on a plaque, you're really not capturing all the people who had contributed to this project, which is true. Um, I think the distinction, though, is that 
the members of this committee had a very special role. So we all had the privilege of working on this, but we also had a responsibility, um, a responsibility to oversee and to make decisions on every aspect of this building from day one to when the building opens. So I think the plaque is more of a memorialization, I didn't say that word well, but of those who had that responsibility. Um, so, you know, I'm really looking for your input on whether you would like to have the names or not. Um, and John was kind enough to do um, several different drafts that we can look at. We, I know we also discussed whether we should have former committee members on the plaque as well. So I looked at um, all the members going back to 2017. Most of them who are no longer on the committee were on only for the first year. So there were, I think, three who are on for more than one year. And two of them were members who were elected to different boards. And as a result, the representation on the committee was no longer needed. One member was a community member who relocated. So again, I'd like your input on what to do about those names, whether to include them if we do do a plaque with names. Um, the last thing is this wasn't on the other plaques, um, but I did add two sentence about the woman that the school is named after. Um, and the reason I did that was because I feel like when we were talking about how to name the school and we chose Blanche Ames, it was really because for a lot of reasons, but the essence of who she was, how she overcame obstacles, how she was true to her talents, how she never stopped developing those talents really represents what we want the school to be for our youngest learners. We wanted it to be a space that could give them the tools to learn, to grow, and to have fun. And I think the school really represents that. So again, this isn't something that needs to be included. It was just a little aside. I put a couple sentences on the plaque and I'm really looking for this committee's um, input on how they would like that to look. So Walter, if you could start to go through those plaques, that would be great. So the plaques that were in all the other schools, um, we'll get to, to that, that. This isn't one of them, but um, this was one. I really like this one. I like the, um, we added the, the district logo as well. So, and it would be black and white on the plaque. So I don't know how people feel about this. It lists, right now it just lists the committee members. We haven't put um, previous committee members on that. Again, we can talk about that. And the Glorboa Blanche is sort of at the bottom. And then we, again, at the last sentence, we have a thing, thinking, I can't even read this, but to the taxpayers and to the MSBA. So I, um, I can I can read that for you. So it says okay. funded by the citizens, funded by the citizens of the town of Easton in conjunction with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. And Jackie, if you'd like me to pull up the other plaques and show the community. Yeah, if you could go through all of them and then we can have a discussion. I think that would be great. Yep. Oh, I, I meant the existing ones too. Like oh, to sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'll grab those too. So I'll, uh, I'll, that was the first one. That's the second uh, sample. I'll give everyone a few seconds to look over that. So. And then here's the third sample. And then here is the fourth sample. And I will pull over the samples of these plaques for everyone to see as well. So this is uh, the HHR uh, Olmstead plaque. Here's the OA plaque. And then here is the middle school plaque. All right. So if anyone wants to see anything again, let me know when I can adjust the screens. If not, I'll turn it back over to Jack. The other change I made. Jane isn't here, but, and I know she would hate this, but I did put Jane as chair as well, because obviously her work is outstanding on this project. Can you so, just flip through them all again, one more time?
and we weren't really sure whether it's the school's going to be de um, dedicated in 2022 or 2023, but obviously the majority of the work is being done in 2022. The school will be complete in 2022, so that's why we put the date that date on the dedication plaque. I like the layout of the first one the most. It just seems cleanest and the most symmetrical. Um, I like the logo in the center and we're all around the logo, which I think is nice. Um, having the full name, including elementary, is great. I agree with Connor. I like the first one best also. I'm just thinking maybe the logo could be a little tiny bit smaller. It's, it's a little bit um, eye-catching, I mean, to a degree that, I mean, if it can't, I really like the logo. I just thought if it could be a little tiny bit smaller. So there's a that little would, more space. That's why I like the fourth one, um, just to be difficult now. Just to be contrary. Yeah, well, Patrick, what else? <laughs> what else could I do, right? Uh, but I like I like this one specifically because, number one, I like the logo included regardless. I thought that was something that I, I definitely wanted to bring up. I like the fact that the quote for Blanche is at the top on this one. And to Connor's previous point, I like the layout. I like the, I think this is this is symmetrical, perhaps not as symmetrical as the first one, but I, I like this layout just as much because, again, smaller logo and it, it has an emphasis on Blanche at the top. Not to nitpick, but, um, and I'm probably the least smart person here about Blanche Ames history, but uh, I, should we not, and I'm not trying to add more words, but I do that for a living. Um, should we not know, she was, uh, maybe suffragette is too wordy, but she was a, a, a notable advocate, right? Yep, and, and we had, um, I actually had talked to Alicia about that a little bit. Um, we can certainly revise that statement, however, the committee wants. The reason I didn't add it in, I couldn't, when I was trying to write it, when I added in too many things, it just, it didn't flow as well. And the suffragette part, as important as it is, of course, um, especially, um, it just, I wasn't sure that was something kids of that age would necessarily get or understand. But we can, I can, I can certainly rework the words and, and get that in too. So, you know, whatever the committee wants. Um, I just, if this is related, I've been going back and forth with um, Perkins Eastman about the ramp and the design there and um, I actually asked them to change the word so they have four themes um, create design and, and one of them is care and I actually requested they change it to serve because and far be it for me to channel Mrs. Ames believe me I'm not trying to do that but in everything that I've read and watched which is an awful lot um, I I feel as though her advocacy, whether it was for, you know, I think all of women's rights, um, is, seems to be among her most proud accomplishments and um, certainly has helped to change the trajectory of our future in a lot of ways. Um, so even I think adding activists um, because they did add, um, I, I mean, I did have them add it. And I think we didn't add the word suffragette, but we said, you know, she served her community by helping women get the right to vote. And we definitely, kids definitely understand the concept of voting. You know, we do it all the time. So we may not have used the word suffragette, but um, if not suffragette, maybe activist. Because, it, okay. you know, it wasn't just voting rights, it was a lot of women's rights. And yeah, think, right. um, maybe and maybe it's shorter for you to fit it <laughs> um, aesthetically. I don't know. I, I agree. Um, and not that Google is the right source, but I mean that's activist is like one of the first things that comes up. And, okay. um, and I think that that is important um, for little buddies to know. Um, the only one about this one uh, the bottom, 
looks a little, uh, it's, it could be me, it's hard for my eye to kind of follow what is where with the spacing. And the first two, at least, seem to be more clean in terms of categories on it. Um, yeah, can and, you get out to the first? Okay. I think you're so, seeing the bold, the bold font probably is distinguishing that. So well, just could, the white space that's used is more compartmentalized, and it seems a lot clear where everyone is. Um, and we could also take out um, Eastern Eastern Massachusetts because we're obviously we know where where we are. Um, well, we could put we'll the blurb. Yeah, right. and we could put the blurb about Blanche up if we wanted to, or we could leave it down, whatever. And I think the point about the smaller seal is mm -hmm. a valid point. And I think maybe that might make it seem less overwhelming, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like this first one too. It's Dawn. And for the record, we can make any changes that you want. So if you want to move the blurb up or add to it or change language, by all means, it's your plaque, it's your school. So we were kind of staying out of the design and just putting forward graphics. So easy enough to make the logo smaller, easy enough to move things around or change white space. So um, however you ultimately want to see it. And if you want to see a couple of versions, happy to do that as well. Can we look at the second one again, just to Patrick's point, I think he said something about the logo at the top. I don't know if that one does anything for you, Patrick, or... I just, I liked the fourth one because of the... Well, actually, the second one's not bad because the, obviously the quote about Blanche is, is larger here. Um, uh, if you go back to four, my point was um, that... I, to, to Leisha's point, right, the, the break for school planning committee and potentially to Walter's point, the, the bolding of something like that might make those two white spaces underneath uh, Chrissy Pruitt and Sam Cedarbaum more, uh, or I guess less uh, jarring. But I like this because it was more like there's a top above the fold, which is the title, who she was to some degree, and then the logo and then the humanity that then was responsible for this underneath I don't, to me that 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 breaks it right so it's it, it's something where it's like here here's why you're here here's mm -hmm. here's who did it and there's a subtlety to the text that i don't think anyone's if you noticed no one's brought it up but in the first one it said the title in bold and then the name and in this one it says the name which is a larger font and the title underneath so if anyone feels strongly or that that affects their graphic desire, by all means, I can make it either way. But they are different if you look at them. I, I'm going to pretend I noticed, and I, I think it's a very it's a very key point. I like the name bigger because I think those lock those titles are so long and capital that they're distracting all on one row like that, and it makes it look off balance on the left to the right. Yeah, it was hard to make it all fit. Yep. <laughs> You're right, Dottie. But on that one, if you if you were to swap those around, drop everything down a little bit, make the logo logo a little bit smaller, the text on the bottom shouldn't really go like ear to ear on each side. You're gonna have to add a word in there, which means it'll go to three lines. And when you pull that together a little bit, I think it will fit perfectly. Um, take out Eastern Massachusetts, put 2022 underneath the logo. You'll have plenty of room up there. Mm. And that may leave the logo in a place where it looks better at this size. And I can play with that a little bit. Like it could either get smaller if it needs to. I think it feels too big because of this, how long the text is. But if we, you know, change it so that the names are bigger and the, the titles are smaller, it may not fill the space as much. And so I'll, I'll have to play with that when I do it. If it still wants to get smaller, that's fine and easy enough. Yeah. And if you put the, the 2022 under the logo, it'll break up a little bit of that white space and it will give you more room under the um, under the top line to focus on that statement. I think right. you guys did a really great job. I liked all four of them in one way or another. So great. Anyone Thank else that has any comments about the plaques, the design? Are we going to come to some sort of consensus? <laughs> 
Um, I highly doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that um, all the, com you know, if Don can um, adjust based on the comments and then, I mean, we're not taking a vote on this, so I could even just send out what this looks like for people to look look at again. Um, but it, it seems like most people that have spoken up um, with the changes that we've discussed, like this first one. And if I'm incorrect in that, please shout out. And Carolyn, to your point, we've, we've essentially edited and we've essentially moved away from two and three. So it's like one seems to be the consensus. There's some design touches on four that may or may not fit with one, but it looks like we're at least coming closer to something that we could then iterate on. No, I agree. And, and your points, the changes that you suggested, um, are good ones, We're, I think. They're awful. I know they're terrible, but that's fine. They're good that's ones. Fine. Good ones. Did you hear me or not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard yeah. you. I just, if I'm not the martyr, what, 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 what happened? <laughs> of course. So one, what if one other little, one other little um, silly thing that will just drive me nuts with like an OCD kind of a thing is um, <laughs> on, on this first one where PMA consultants floats a little bit higher than the, the text on the right, I would want to have that text on the bottom, both of those line up and you can space out the categories on the left so they both have the same top line and they both have the same bottom line. I agree with you. I sort of noticed that myself that maybe owner's project manager could go down or, or the arc, I mean, somehow space them so that they end at the same point, the right and the left, the left and, and the right. Increase the space right here. Yep. Okay. Easy to yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. To throw a little wrench in that. Go to four. Um, what, what do people think about adding the names of former committee members? I suppose we would have to know how many names that is. Yep. I don't so know. So I can tell you that. There were, um, where are my notes? Of course, I can't find them. Um, so from my memory, there were seven. And of those seven, four were only on for that first year. So there were three who were on for more than one year. Um, two of them were well, as I said, board members who were elected to different boards, and one was a, a community member who, who relocated. Um, so when I was going through and trying to figure out what, what I thought, um, you know, I thought it would make more sense if we were going to add any former committee members it would be the ones that were there for longer than just that first year. Because I think that first year, there was a lot of transitions. The committee was just getting started. Some people were coming on, some people going off. Um, so that was, that was my thought, um, whether you want to stick to just the, the board members because they were, um, they left not because they wanted to, but because they went to another board and they are, that board already had a representative, um, whether you wanted to put the community member on as well, you know, whether you don't want to do any of it, that's either way is fine. Jackie? Yeah. I think your your basic criterion of being on more than the first year when, as you said, everything was just sort of at the beginning stages and, and the committee hadn't really solidified yet. But um, <clears throat> I would be tempted to add the two board members because, as you said, it was because they essentially were elected to other positions and so no longer could represent <clears throat> their previous boards. Um, and the community member, I, I mean, I happen to know who it was. She, she certainly made many contributions and left um, certainly, I sort of say kicking and screaming. I mean, she really didn't want to leave, but, you know, because of a change in um, employment, had to do so. So I would be sympathetic to adding her, but I don't know <clears throat> how the rest of the committee feels. But I do think that maybe the two board members that would have remained on the committee almost certainly had their circumstances not changed through an election. Yeah, I say more the merrier, right? People were people were involved. I don't think it hurt. I don't. I don't. I don't think it's going to be all that drastic a change to add a few more names to it necessarily. Like bronze is relatively cheap, I assume, considering this is a ninety-two million dollar project. Like I think we can probably stretch it a smidge, right? Well, in particular, one of those committee members was on. For almost every year except for this past year. Oh yeah. 
So that's four. Right. Days. It would be three. three. It would either right. be two or three, depending on what this committee wants to do. I it, have, in my opinion. I have no issue with that. I mean, if it fits, that's nice to, to include in my, that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, I agree. So I, I think, Don, I think what we heard or to maybe probably for the entire group, I think add those names um, and then adjust. We're going to drop two and three and then adjust one and four um, with those comments or um, and then Jackie, do we I, I think we should. I, I don't know if we discussed it last meeting that the decision is a school committee decision, but if yeah. you, I, think we, I think we should brief this group that that's the case, right? Yeah, so what I can do is once the changes are made, I can just send them out to everyone just to give a look at, and then I could bring um, I could bring both to school committee meeting um, and let the committee members know how this committee feels about the plaques and, and what they, um, that these are the two that they prefer and, or if there's one that they prefer at that point. So, and then the, the school committee can vote on that and we can get going. Does anyone else have any other comments either about the layout or about including additional members or anything to do with this? Uh, can't what was see the, everyone, so just please shout out. What was the material? Uh, was it stainless steel or bronze? Uh, weren't, I think we were actually talking about stainless steel, weren't we? I believe I, it was at the last meeting, but I don't know if that was actually decided. Yeah, I think Dan had suggested it because it's a little more modern of a material, but I don't know that we have any idea if it's an equal cost or not. We, we can certainly find that out. We can reach out to Brave Builders and find out. I apologize. I think we were supposed to do that before the meeting. Um, okay, thank you. But we can, we can find out if there's a cost differential between the two. Um, is there the other... I was just going to ask what the other plaques that you showed earlier, are those, are those all, are any of those stainless or are those all bronze? The middle school is, is stainless, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, they, they look relatively the same. Oh, yeah. That one says former members on it. Yeah. 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 Well, there you go. <laughs> I, I don't know that I would put former members, but I would actually add the names. But I think if you can see the middle school. Oh, but that's what I mean. They included. Oh, yeah. They included yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so it wasn't the middle school. It was RO. So, yeah, I believe the bottom two are bronze, and the yep. top is the stainless. Don, is that accurate? If you can see this, I or Dan, if you can see it, is this one stainless, or is this just it, a colored? It's definitely silver, but I can't tell that it's stainless. It might be like a bronze that is not brown. I couldn't yeah. tell either. Otis yeah, the, the, the border is definitely stainless, but I mean, right. not stainless, but silver, but I don't, oh, yeah. So yes, the stainless would look much different than all three of these because it's very likely that the background would be not this bluish color. Um, and it certainly wouldn't look like these, these bronze ones. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, much more modern feel to it. Um, the only, uh, I hesitate to make my last comment because it's entirely um, personal, but I sort of have like a aversion to hierarchies. I always talk about the district as being an inverted pyramid. And I just, when I look at two, three, and four, it looks like a hierarchy to me. Um, where this one just looks more equal. Again, that's a personal thing, and I leave it there and won't say it again, but it's just uh, something that I'm sensitive to and will totally live with if we do anything different, but this just seems like a group as opposed to a... No, I actually agree with you, Alicia. I, I think it... Visually, to me, it looks better, but I think that's one of the reasons that it looks better to me. It's It seems more equitable in terms of the credit, whatever we want to call it, but uh, 
It's like we're all in this together. I'm the one who's involved, so I think that's a I think that's a great point, right? Just when when Jackie initially said, you know, we want to talk about whether or not we include names, I was like, how am I going to have my kid who's about to attend this school go and point to my name ten times a day and show all his <laughs> friends if the names are on there, right? That's obviously a key concern here, right? Um, <laughs> Because I'm going to force him to do it or else he won't eat dinner. Uh, but I like that idea because it's like, yeah, I mean, this, this, this has been a wide ranging process for everybody involved. And I think that also, I think that ties directly back to the point about former members as well, right? Like there, there was a lot of people that were, I mean, that first year, there was a lot of people that were like key contributors. The community member we're mentioning was, was one of the, the top ones that I think of when I, when I think of how the self got started. Right. So like, I think democratizing maybe is the, is the verb that we use to it's like, yeah, you know, we're all in this together. Let's, let's throw everybody in. I do Patrick, think make sure your child has an Instagram. Oh, he will. When this thing goes up, just you wait. <laughs> going to buy him a phone, the whole thing. <laughs> But I do think Jackie's point about, you know, the first year being um, just kind of a, almost like a, just the beginning and not really, uh, because adding seven more people, I'm not sure makes a whole lot of sense, but I do like the idea of adding the people that made significant contributions for a period of time thereafter. Don, you got all that? Yes, I do. No, it's good. <laughs> Don, that's okay. We can talk about it. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie and Don and Walter, for all that you put into this. Um, uh, this was all Jackie and Don. They, I just threw it on a presentation for you guys. Be a guy who's um, modest. About <laughs> I like that. No, this was all Don. I couldn't even manage to get like uh, anything going. <laughs> so it was well, all Don. Okay, that is that is Jackie's modesty speaking. <laughs> no, <laughs> not not um, accepting it. It's a team effort, <laughs> team effort all around. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, if there's no more comments, I'll I'll jump to the next uh, slides. I don't know that there is a lot. Um, there's not. Uh, so next meetings are October 19th, November 16th, and December 21st. I think we are good avoiding holidays there. Um, Dan, was there any new business we wanted to discuss with the committee? Um, I think one item we can we can let them know we're going to that we talked about today was uh, the stop sign that we're going to add over at the connecting road the stop sign that exists at the connecting road is going to be up tomorrow but also we're going to add one for people leaving from the north part of the middle school parking lot to create a little bit more safety at that intersection um, obviously a minor cost but non-discretion but we want to let everyone know if you've been over there and, and witnessed any issues where obviously it's in the break-in time um, but that is one thing that we decided was going to be great there um, Anything else, Dan, that we thought would be new business or any other new business or Don that you guys might have for the committee? No, I think that was it. That was the only piece I remember from talking about today at the earlier meeting was bringing that up tonight. Yep. Um, and then Jackie or anyone from the committee, do you guys have any new business for the design team or for PMA or the construction team? Does anyone have anything they'd like to add? So. Oh, sorry. No, no Caroline had her hand up first. <laughs> okay. I just, I did want to mention that um, I'm looking for some guidance from all of you folks in terms of how we might handle requests to memorialize people in the outside spaces. We're going to have, we're kind of reforming a school committee naming subcommittee to look at possibilities for individuals who may want to name spaces or whatever after someone that they care about or in, in memory of someone. But I've actually received a request to um, memorialize a child in an outside space. I mean, not a request, but just someone questioning whether this was possible. 
And I, um, I don't know if this would actually be part of the formal naming subcommittee's work. So I'm just wondering, um, I know you have wonderful landscape architecture people and all of those things, but the person who got in touch with me is just looking for a way to honor um, her child um, and in, in one of the outdoor spaces. So I just thought a little, if people could kind of, you know, think about that and think about, I, I did talk with uh, Sam about that and he's well aware of this um, request. Um, anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Anyone have any comments on that? Do you want to have us um, have Ashley reach out to this person? Ashley's our the landscape, the landscape architect. architect. No, 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 I know, I know who, yeah, I know who yeah. Ashley is. I just had to think for a minute. Um, I think probably I would need to talk to her first. I mean, I'm not giving, I'm not giving any names at this point. Um, um, but um, that's not a bad idea at all. I, I think, uh, I mean, we do have to sort of determine as a school committee whether we want to include that as part of the formal, we're trying to create a sort of procedure for people who may want to name any space in any school. As you may be aware, um, we had a naming campaign for Alderman's High School when it was first built. Um, but at this point, we know that we need to create a opportunities for people for any any of the school spaces. Um, but, you know, what we had in mind was indoor spaces, but that doesn't mean that couldn't be changed. But it's just, so So let me think a little bit about, or let me talk to the, the person that I spoke with and just see whether she'd like to have the landscape architect to reach out. Um, but we want to provide opportunities to anyone in outdoor spaces if we provide that for one person. Does that make sense? In other words, we can't, I don't think, say that we'll, this one request will be considered separately from any other request necessarily. So it's a little bit complicated and I'm sure Sam can appreciate that too. Um, but I just was wondering in a way what specific sort of spaces might be appropriate. Would, would a tree be appropriate? Would a pathway with, with bricks or something like that be appropriate? Um, that could involve, you know, honoring many people. So I just, uh, I just wanted to kind of ask if people had some ideas. I'd love to hear them, but also um, let me think about having Ashley reach out to this uh, this person who reached out to us. Is there an existing Thank process you. at the other schools? But, but Pardon me. Is there an existing process at the other schools that Not are already? Not for closed? outdoor spaces. There, no. there's a naming campaign at the high school, and um, I, you know, I, I did ask that the school committee, and they want to make one for this school because we've already had questions about that. Um, and I know, I, I, sure, I know where the request is coming from, and it completely makes sense. But I just want to make sure there is a process because, you know, one person approaching as opposed to people knowing that it's even an opportunity, is it just because this person approached and other people maybe didn't and it could be very unfair or we could have, you know, 40 trees or what have you. So I think a consideration of maybe they're just memorials for outdoor planning or maybe just for children or former educators or just, I, I have no idea, but I, I think some guidance would be, I know for me, guidance would be very much appreciated for that. Um, and maybe it is a bigger project where there's a wall or a walkway where many people can be involved in purchasing a piece of it or something. I really don't know if there would be interest or what it would be, but um, you know, as people learn about it, their family members are just as valued and I know they will be just as passionate and I'm not sure a lack of guidelines just makes me a little bit nervous. 
I will I just, add my, two, my two cents is if this is a school committee decision, I feel uncomfortable even contributing or being part of this conversation in this venue, um, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, if we're going to talk about it ahead of the school committee when it's a policy decision for them. Well, all rather, spaces are, at, only indoor spaces are. So, all right. So I think that, um, and Caroline, please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think it's so much setting up the policy because I think that is something the school committee is working on putting together a subcommittee to come up with policies and procedures on how to do the spaces. It's with this particular school, are there certain spaces outdoors that would lend themselves to this type of thing? So what would be this? I, I think she's just asking what would be the spaces, not necessarily, right. you know, what the procedure is. Um, I, think you have, I think you have a few spaces. I think you have, I mean, if you broke it down, you have the three, almost four playground areas. You have the right. sensory oh, yeah. You have, then you also, it, you have each of the canopies um, that could be utilized the as classroom. the wetland classroom, um, the fields, um, the, the mile, the mile club, the walking club path. That, that's throughout Dan and Don. I'm trying to think of any other spaces. Well, so, there's some, so maybe I'm sorry to interrupt you all. Maybe the best thing then is for um, if Caroline, if you want to get in touch with um, either Walter or Don, or I can get you in touch with them and you could, we could just put a list together of potential spaces. And then when you meet with your subcommittee or whoever's going to be on the subcommittee or school committee, you know, then you can kind of decide indoor spaces, outdoor spaces, what are the procedures you're coming up with? Are they different? Are they the same? And that can all be kind of factored into. But um, does that make sense? It does. Uh, in case I didn't make it clear, the individual who did approach the school committee, I mean, members of the school committee, um, has indicated that um, the family very much would make a generous donation. Uh, this was not just, you know, we want to find a space to memorialize our child. It was, you know, that we would like to do this in conjunction with the donation. So I just, you know, just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Right, and then I think, as as you said before, with all, with all of the schools, with any of the namings, we just have to come up with the procedures to um, allow for that so that it's fair to anyone who is interested. Um, okay, uh, Connor, did you have something? Just um, for Walter, so the next meeting uh, is just after the contract date for the building. What what are we all anticipating by the next meeting? A lot of work. Um, we are we are pushing them right now, and they have increased their manpower. Um, they are going to do everything they can to hit that substantial completion date. I think there's probably um, concern that substantial completion, meaning beneficial use or um, beneficial use of the owner or 99% of work in place um, may not be achieved, but we are not at a point of concern for furniture being received in the building. We are not at a point of concern for um, occupancy on January 1st. We are not at a point of concern for teachers and staff moving in, uh, items being moved into the building um, when they need to be prior to that. Um, but the work in place is, um, is moving fast at this point in time. Um, it's going to be tight. We know that. Um, we've, we've known that. So they're moving right along. But concern for occupancy on January 1st is not a concern at this time. And I know we talked about having another walkthrough for the committee members, and initially we had thought October, but we're getting our furniture all around that time. So um, we'll just have to either do the November date or a different date. For a, a committee walkthrough? Yes. Great. Yeah, that was going to be good. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Shout out. Okay. Then I will take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second? Second. I'll do a roll call vote. Cabral? Yes. 
Weintraub, Gus Sobrai. Um, O'Neill. Yes. Baldinetti. Yes. Reed. Yes. Cedarbaum. Yes. Vamosi. Yes, Vamosi. Helen. Yes. Wiseman, yes. Did I miss anyone? No. Nope. Okay, so thank you all very much and uh, look forward to seeing you next month. And then when we get the revised dedication plaque drafts, I will send those out. Have a great night. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Bye everyone.